Welcome to the AJ Awesome Show, a show about my favorite things. My name is AJ, and my special guest for this episode is Matt Taven. I hope you like the show. Hello, everybody. I am here with the trend, Matt Taven. Perfect. That's all anyone, you nailed it. Next question. <laughs> I'm here with AJ Awesome. AJ, I was just saying how awesome your background was. Uh -huh. uh, have you ever seen the Northern Lights in person? No. Neither have I, man. Neither have I. It's a goal of mine. All right. I live in Missouri, so it's hard to see. I can't really see the Northern Lights where I live. Yeah, not where I live either. It's gonna, we're gonna one of us is gonna have to make a trip up north, but one of these days, it's a race. So I'm rooting for you to beat me to it. But yeah, it's a goal of mine to see the Northern Lights. What was the moment you knew you wanted to be a wrestler? Oh, there's so many. Um, I always say that. The first time I saw wrestling, I fell in love with it. And I, I've been saying to my parents and anyone that would listen that I wanted to be a wrestler ever since. And I, I can vivid remem vividly remember being five, six years old. Uh, my, great, my great uncle, yeah, my grandfather's brother, he was staying over and he was a wrestling fan. He had me change the channel and I saw the Ultimate Warrior. It's kind of like a background like yours right now, colorful lightning bolt. He was wearing a title belt. He had all these colors on and I was hooked. I was hooked. And ever since then, I, I, I think I, at different points of my life, kind of reassured myself that I wanted to do it. But starting that first time I ever saw wrestling, I knew it was something I wanted to do. Who is your favorite wrestler? Of all time? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so hard. I, I would say if I had to pick my my number one guy of all time, it's it's Bret the Hitman Hart. I was always a Bret Hart fan. Um, but, it, you know, if I'm being honest, as like a group of five guys, maybe even six, it's like the Ultimate Warrior got me into it. But then I love the Macho Man. Bret Hart, like I said, is my guy. Shawn Michaels. Chris Jericho, RVD, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a crew of guys that are kind of all in this, in a similar vein. Um, but uh, yeah, they all kind of shaped my fanhood throughout the years. Who's your favorite? My favorite would probably be, I don't know. I have a lot right now. The Fiends one, probably. On. Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns are having a really good story right now. Uh, and probably, uh, Harley would be one of mine, even because he's been, I've known him for a really long time. I was really hoping my name would make it on there, but maybe next time. <laughs> Harley Race. Harley Race? Yeah. You're a Harley Race fan? Yeah, I met him. I've been, I've met him. Harley when I was three. Race, uh, well, good for you, because Harley Race is one of the toughest guys that we've ever had in wrestling, and I'm glad that a young fan like yourself knows about Harley Race. That really is a, uh, that's, that's a delight to see. What advice would you give a new wrestler? Uh, never give up. As cliche as that sounds, it, it, wrestling's about showing up showing that you care, showing that you love it. And, you know, obviously there's these, you know, knowing the right people and networking and stuff like that. But I can't tell you how many opportunities have come up uh, in my career just because I was there, you know, just because all of a sudden you need someone and you know, oh, this guy's always here. Let's give him a shot. And that happens all the time. Uh, so it's just one of those things where, Wrestling is extremely tough. And sometimes you're like, I don't want to show up tomorrow. I, I want to just say, you know, forget all this. I'm going to go home and watch some movies and put my feet up. But it's like, if you just keep making the drives and keep showing up and then and just keep putting a smile on your face and just remembering that this is like, wrestling is, is something that we loved at a young age. And when it comes down to it, it's, it's 
not a job by any means. It's a, it's a pleasure to be a part of. So when you kind of take it as like, this is what you've always wanted to do. It's easy to just always show up. Uh, the other thing is that, um, find your voice, find your voice. And like, what I mean by that is that for some wrestlers, it takes a long time to kind of find their, their, their voice, their, how they sound in the ring, how they cut a promo, what they do. It took me a while, but once I did, things started clicking. So I say, keep trying, keep yelling, keep trying to say stuff. Even if it's just, you look back on it and you're like, what am I saying? What am I doing? All those reps will end up kind of leading you in the right direction. So if you keep showing up and you keep just trying new stuff, you're going to stumble on something and, uh, you know, persistence, persistence, persistence. Who has had the biggest influence on your career? Ooh, wow. Um, a lot of people, like a lot of, you know, different phases have kind of had different people. I, I would say Mike uh, Bennett has helped me out a lot and we've helped each other out because as we've kind of moved up the, the, the ranks and through our wrestling career, we've kind of done it side by side, but that's more of a peer thing. But there's definitely guys like, you know, Tommy Dreamer helped me out so, so much when I was first starting out uh, and just kind of guiding me and giving me advice. And he's just such a good dude that I knew I could always kind of call and, and ask, for, you know, what should I do in this situation? What should I do in that situation? And that was kind of handed off because I trained with Spike Dudley, who uh, obviously, you know, helped me out tremendously when I was first starting out and uh, really just learning the ropes for the first time that started all with spike and then once i started getting out there again that was more of uh tommy you know helping me out and 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 guiding me in the right direction um but after that it's it's really been you know a slew of guys from the roderick strongs and the jay lethals the kevin steens and you know guys that are your peers but are a little bit ahead of you that you're watching kind of move that step that you're looking to move into. They're already there and they're moving upwards. So you're kind of picking their brain and trying to find out how they got into that position and following their lead. And, you know, when I say like, find your voice, I think that's something that uh, I learned from, from Kevin Owens because he just kept talking and talking and talking. And it was one of those things where, you know, you, you had to pay attention to him because he was going to get your, your attention one way or the other. Um, and it really kind of, open my eyes to be like, I just got to keep, keep saying stuff, keep trying stuff until something sticks. So um, we're, we're lucky, especially in ring of honor. We're lucky to have a lot of guys that have come and go that have come and gone, but I've had a lot of experience and helped other people that were beneath them really along the way and, and help them feed into those roles that they would later take. What is the proudest moment of your career? Uh, well, I think that would have to be winning the world title in Madison Square Garden. Uh, I grew up in the Northeast. I grew up a wrestling fan. So the Boston Garden, the Philadelphia, Philadelphia Spectrum, and Madison Square Garden were like the meccas of wrestling. And um, to A, be in a sold out Madison Square Garden was unbelievable. But to win the title in a ladder match, to look around a sold out Madison Square Garden and pull down the world title from, from the that world's famous ceiling. I don't know if I'm ever going to top that moment. I will always, you know, strive to, I feel like it will be what I'm chasing forever. Um, but that definitely one day uh, I'll be an old man remembering that moment as, uh, as definitely one of the highlights of my career. If you could wrestle anyone in the world, alive or dead, who would you pick? Oh man, that's a, a great question. Um, uh, three names really come to mind. I think, uh, you know, I, I would say Bret Hart, but it's really Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. And then someone who, you know, I, I still, it could never, you never say never. So it could happen one day is, is Chris Jericho. I've always looked up to those three guys. And I really feel like my style kind of emulated those guys, especially. Um, so as a kid, when you're like wrestling your stuffed animal or your pillow, you know, you'd always imagine you're wrestling Bret Hart or Chris Jericho or Shawn Michaels. So, uh, you know, hopefully one day, maybe I can make one of those a reality. You saying 
you saying me wrestling like my stuffed animals and stuff brought me back to like three years ago whenever I used to like have an entire wrestling company with like the 10 stuffed animals I had. You and me both. Three years ago, I was doing the same thing. I was just like, had all my stuffed animals lined up. I was writing down the card. They all had great entrance music. It was, it was a good time. <laughs> what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, that's, see, these are the good questions. These are the questions I need more often. If I'm just going straight ice cream, like not Sunday or anything on it, I usually would go for like a, a mint chocolate chip or some sort of mint chip. Um, but, uh, if I'm doing like a Sunday and, and I see a good coconut ice cream, I don't know, maybe it's a new thing I've been into, but uh, coconut ice cream has really been, been the top of my list lately. And I've been doing a lot of ice cream lately. <laughs> my favorite would either be probably chocolate chip or there's another type of ice cream that I liked it that, uh, one. Sunday fun day. It's is that Sunday. like funfetti? Because anything funfetti is a thumbs up. For it me. was, I think, a cookie dough ice cream that was really good. You, you and I they, like cookie dough or cookies and cream. Those are probably my top two. I, I will never say no to any ice cream. You know, it, what, what anyone's favorite ice cream is, I'm like, that's a good ice cream. You know, it, and they say wrestling's like ice cream. There's so many different flavors. Well, maybe that's why I'm a wrestling fan too, because I like them all. So, you know, ice cream is my language. I, 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 I don't know. It's hard to pick between different ice creams. It's like picking between children if I had any. What did your parents say when you told them you were going to be a wrestler? <laughs> At what part of my life? Uh, as a kid, they would tell me, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's focus on going to college and, and finding a real job. Uh, but after I went to college and after I was, you know, working a real job, um, and, and I still said I wanted to be a wrestler, I, I think it was one of those moments when I realized I could or that it was okay to be one because my parents were very supportive once that happened. And they, they told me, you know, you, you're young once, you have a degree to fall back on, which, give it a shot. And I was kind of blown away since my entire life. They told me that, uh, I don't know, maybe to stay safe and stay away from wrestling. Uh, but once they, they gave me that green light, I was kind of off and running. So um, for many years, they told me to, to cut it out, to stop wrestling, to stop breaking all their furniture. Uh, and then one day they became the most supportive fans that you could ask for. Do you have a hidden talent that nobody knows about? I feel like as wrestlers, we put a lot out there uh, on the internet. And so I feel like people know most of my talents, but I don't think a lot of people know I, I was in a band before called Winslow Gray. I'm sure there's some stuff on like pure volume and some, some old um, MP3 sites. Uh, but it's been about 10, 12 years. Oh my God. It's been a while uh, since I've, I've been in the band. I used to play keyboard and piano and stuff like that. So I, I would say that that's my hidden talent. It's my hidden musical talent. What has been the most difficult part of the ROH bubble tapings? Well, that's a great question. Um, the most difficult part is that there's such a there's such a, a part of the wrestling world that you don't see in front of the camera that happens behind the scenes. And a lot of that you, you really can't have in the bubble because we have to isolate and we have to quarantine from one another. But, you know, guys like Dalton Castle, Mike Bennett, these are some of my, my closest friends in the whole world. And a lot of the joy that I get from being a wrestler is traveling all over the place with some of my closest friends and, and just living life, experiencing life uh, with, with, your close buddies who just happen to be your co-workers so the fact that we you know we end up very isolated we're in these um quarantine little groups when we shuttle back and forth from the arena we're in these quarantine little locker rooms and then you end up kind of like facetiming your buddies and you know they're they're a couple rooms down or they're on a different hallway you're like it's it's crazy that we have to do this but um whatever we have to do to keep to keep the tapings going, obviously, we're, we're willing to, to do. Uh, but it's just, 
there's there's a big chunk missing that camaraderie that you have with with you and your fellow wrestlers um guys that i haven't been able to really see or catch up with since the beginning of, of the pandemic so it's hard you know you keep up with them as much as you can but there's nothing like seeing your friends in person and being able to hang out but Hopefully, if we just keep doing this and, and stay safe, we'll be back to uh, hanging out and seeing each other and having live crowds again uh, sooner than later because we definitely miss it. What is next for the trend? What is next for the trend? Oh, um, well, the next thing is the anniversary show, the 19th anniversary of Ring of Honor, which is kind of crazy uh, to even think about because I my first anniversary show was the 11th anniversary, and to think – how quickly we're already here at 19 is, ooh, time goes by quick. Uh, so at the 19th anniversary show, I got a couple things that I would I would love to do, and I'm 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 looking for Ring of Honor to to come to the plate with at least one of these options. I'm I'm ranked number three in the world title division, and I've never gotten my championship rematch after losing the title to Roosh. So I would love for another shot at the Ring of Honor world title. Me and Michael Bennett, we are ranked number one for the tag team titles. So the OGK, we're, we're, we're waiting for our title shot. We're just waiting for the green light. We would love to do that at the anniversary show it as well. But uh, if I'm being completely honest, what I would love to do the most is just settle the score between me and my old friend Vinny, uh, who's changed and now wants to be called Vincent because he's a Melvin. And uh, he's really just kind of ruined everything that has been going on in Ring of Honor since returning from the break, from the pandemic break. And I can't seem to accomplish the goals that I want to accomplish uh, because of this guy who's obsessed with me and wants to just ruin everything that I have going. So I would really like to kind of nip that one in the bud, take care of that dork, and then move on to being champion again. I saw a question on Twitter that was like, Whenever you win the world tag team belts, will you turn the belts purple? <laughs> um, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. I don't know how much Michael uh, is, is, a, is a purple guy as I am. You know, that's why when I turned the world title belt to purple, I didn't have to worry about anyone else's opinion. Uh, but the thing is, is that me and Mike, we had the Ring of Honor world titles before, but we never had the newer version of the Ring of Honor world tag team titles so maybe we, we need a couple of pictures of those ones first, and then I'll think of uh, redesigning the belts. Is there anything else you would like us to know about you? Oh, about me? Uh, I'm Carrie. Uh, I have a big heart. No, uh, I, I think what people, what I would like other people to know about me is that, um, you know, I, I've helped train a lot of people. I've been in Ring of Honor for a long time. I love seeing wrestlers who are are new and fresh and that you can see are going to be good before they even know it. Um, and I kind of love the fact that Ring of Honor is really becoming this place where new talent are coming in and you're really getting a taste of them first. And it's funny because you'll see them pop up all these other places, but when you go back and look at look at it, Ring of Honor is usually the first one to give them a dark match or to give them anything like that. And uh, the little hand that I've had uh, helping people get into Ring of Honor or get a look at Ring of Honor, um, I think that's the one thing that uh, I, I, maybe I'm most proud of. You know, I, I always have an opportunity to talk about myself, but I never get an opportunity to kind of talk about things that uh, are going on for other people that uh, almost bring me as much joy as, as the accomplishments that I do on my own. So um, maybe shouting out guys like Christian Casanova, uh, Brad Hollister, uh, Channing Thomas, these guys all coming up in New England who are just unbelievable. And hopefully they don't take my spot too quickly. You know, I got a lot of years left, but uh, they're definitely the future of the business. That's the end. Thanks for the interview. Thanks, AJ. Uh, camera fist bump? Give it to me. Oh. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the AJ Awesome Show. I'd like to thank Matt Taven for being my special guest. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.